Hello everybody and welcome back to the LCS Challengers League promotion tournament presented to you by Subway. Before we begin, big hearts over to Mizell and the rest of the play uh, guys over in the Caster Commander. Mizell was so ready to cast this best of five. Then the internet just kind of got to them a little bit, so yeah. make sure to, to send some hearts over his way. I know that he was super excited to, to get on the show and for, for one more time here in the in the spring split. But I'm my name is Grapes. I'm here once again to, to fill this spot, and I'm joined alongside Cubby again. So um, you know, here to do my best given the circumstance. Of course, you know what? You always do your best, Grapes, and I appreciate how you lived up to your Twitter tag of Speedy Grapes, being able to hop in last <laughs> second. As yeah, hearts out to Mazel. It was totally out of control. We were ready and raring to go, and uh, internet died. And, uh, that's all right. We, I had a lot of fun with you yesterday and excited to see this best of five today as we get to decide the first team that will promote to the NACL today. Yeah, let's take a look at that bracket. We went through the lower bracket semifinals yesterday, and today it is our first promotion match. Lit Esports and CCG both won that upper semifinal with CCG having to beat Ole Miss in the first play in before that. And now the winner of this series will play will play again in summer split, but the loser having a matchup in one more best of five against the winner of Blue Otter versus Winthrop. Yeah, these are the perks of that double elimination bracket and winning those best of threes early. Two potential best of fives for each of these teams to make it through. And familiar territory for Lit Grapes as they were a team that promoted last summer. Their top side of Dragoon and Kizdo, they promoted in spring. Didn't get the chance to play that one out with Supernova, uh, but they did with Lit. And honestly, I feel like they're even more so at a comfort zone, given that this is a roster that people didn't really expect for them to be in this position. I know they were the one seed coming in, but most people saw the roster changes of Mirage Alliance, saw how hot CCG were, not having dropped the game with Bradley throughout all of the OQ tournament. And now Lit has a chance to kind of play upsets here as CCG, heavily favored by many to promote today. It was this exact stage in the tournament where Lit actually were able to promote last time yeah. around winning in all the way through and then eventually taking that best of five uh to promote in for spring so let's take a look at our schedule here for today it is of course just that one best of five a fearless best of five uh Liddy, i don't think has played a fearless best of five ccg has oh. although that only went three games so depending on how this series goes cubby we're gonna see the champion pools really get tested yeah i'm excited for this one especially because lit likes to dig deep with their picks even in best of threes Dragoon's pool always getting banned out, looking at that Darius. Now in a best of five, you have a legitimate question of, hey, do we that Darius through game one, game two, give that game plan to Dragoon so we don't have to worry about that ban for the rest of the series? Definitely something a lot of these teams are thinking about behind the scenes as they game plan for this best of five. And I will say for CCG, this is a chance for them to get their members back in familiar territory with promoting to the LCS Challengers League, of course, presented by Subway as CCG... They have a roster of four people that have been here before. Uh, and also Crimson, the twin brother of Sniper. Very excited to uh, see him promote potentially. You know, a lot of people at home are excited about his prospects as a pro as well. Yeah, we take a look at their roster right here. As you said, Crimson in the top lane, followed by Yukino, Bradley, Instinct, and Trevor. Experience to the roof, as you said. I mean, all four, four of those players were in the NACL as recently as 2023. And Bradley and Instinct specifically have really stepped up and, and been big carries both in the qualifiers and early on here in the promotion tournament. Look, for me, I think Bradley and Instincts have been the two best carries in the tournament so far. They've been fantastic. Bradley has been going crazy for mid lane. And frankly, Messages was a mid laner on the side of Lit that I wasn't super impressed with, with chal in Challengers League. I think at times he struggled in lane. But against Winthrop, Messages stepped up so big in that series to get them that 2-1 and get them to this best of five. I'm excited to see if Messages can kind of uh, really step up to the plate once again. And we can take a look at Messages' full team, that roster that has ran it back, all dating back to summer 2023. Dragoon, Kizno, Messages, Rockboom, and Plux. And as you said, Cubby, at the top of the show, this was a team that was doubted pretty heavily coming into the last time they were in the promotion tournament. They were doubted again, even in that matchup that they had against Winthrop, and still were able to surprise a lot of people taking that series 2-1. to one. Yeah, I, I know Mazel was talking with them before this series, and lit after they dropped from Challengers League, they actually took a short break from just practicing just kind of took a deep breath and talking with lit now they feel like that break really helped them kind of reset and they looked a lot better against winthrop in that best of three i thought they had a much better idea of how to play map and the, the perks of lit like where i felt like this team was really strong is that they actually had a good idea of how to play out fights 
They could set up objectives decently well. They team fought well instinctively. They played off each other as a team. It was just getting out of the early game and getting out of lanes to get them there that sometimes really hampered this team, especially against the top teams that we had in Challengers League. I thought this promotion tournament would be an opportunity for them to, you know, face easier early games and scale up to the later stages of the game where they're going to be quite comfortable. But going up against CCG, as you know, Grace, yeah. this team loves the late game. They, they definitely do, but they also have some pretty highly skilled players who can not skill yes. check you in lane a little bit. And so compared to some of the other qualifier teams that we have, this might be another challenge for Lit that might face some of the demons that they had throughout the NACL regular season. We're into the draft for game number one. Lit is the higher seed, opting towards blue side to start things off. And I want to cast our minds over to Rockboom and Kizna specifically for this game. Rockboom. Um, a very, very solid player who joined late last minute on this team yeah. before the last time they were promoted. And I think has been a really, really big, uh, you know, focal point around them, big, big carry for them. And Kizno is someone who I think has been very improved since the last, the first time that we saw him just about a year ago in his rookie split. Yeah, Kizno for me, when he promoted with Supernova, I thought that he was one of the weaker members of the team. I, I feel like Kizno made a lot of strides, especially in Champs Q, when that was up before the season started. In the season, I, I thought Kizno kind of went back to being a little bit directionless during the games. But against that series with Winthrop again, I actually thought Kizno played quite well. And he is someone that I know he can play the carries. It's just sometimes about, you know, playing jungle at that competitive level where sometimes you do have to sack camp, sack your own game to make sure your laners are set up for success. I think sometimes Kizno almost tries to over-aggress dropping camps. And then when that goes wrong, it can really hurt. And frankly, that's something that I also see with Yukino sometimes on the side of CCG as well, where he goes for plays that just aren't there. Uh, but Yukino, yeah. kind of like Kizno, his hands get him out of those scenarios. So... I expect each jungler to have a couple of uh, over-aggressive moments, but also some good ones, because obviously they, they have the hands and the talent that have gotten them there in the first place. And I'm glad to see that Kindred getting taken away by CCG. That's one of Kizno's most played champions. Uh, you know, Darius still available for Dragoon, but we are still in game one of a five-game series, potentially in Fearless. So have to wait to see all of those cards getting dealt, but we do actually see that Darius taken away. Now, still a lot of power picks on the board. Jinx and Zeri have been very high in the priority charts, given the recent changes, as we're now here on 14.6. Giving Rock Boom an early carry would be pretty big, but Nautilus has also been something that has been rising in popularity as a very strong pick in the bottom lane. Yeah, you got to assume in a best five that each team is going to get one game in Nautilus. And now I think CCG, this really pressures them to try and take away the Senna. Senna saw changes on 14-6, but it was only for Marksman Senna. Those were kind of reverted and then they nerfed uh, support Senna on 14-7, which you're playing live at home. Uh, so we'll see if CCG decides to deny that. At the moment, though, uh, looks like you're just going to play Jinx Comp into it, which frankly, if you go for those resets, uh, it is something that is very sound and man instinct on that jinx against Ole Miss was absolutely ma or I, w I forget which game instinct played jinx but he was fantastic in that game and for me i think jinx has kind of been underserved in tier three i thought that he was a huge snub from your guys's all pro list and in, in some of the tape i've seen this guy positions so well in team fights i don't think that he deserves like gets enough credit for playing the role he does the safety that he brings and every team fight from him feels very methodical, which is the instinct that I remember who promoted a little bit too early for me for LCS. So uh, really excited to see him kind of making a resurgence with this really good team as he was someone that I always felt like had promise, especially in the team fights. Yeah, you know, Instinct, I think definitely, you know, I, I appreciate the criticism thrown because yeah. definitely is justified, especially from seeing how he's been playing throughout this promotion tournament specifically. I think a lot of the time we were looking at the CCG roster and we saw, you know, players like Bradley and, and Yukino and even Crimson making super flashy plays and Instinct's kind of just in the back, like doing a lot of damage. And sometimes that's all you need, especially yeah. on a team full of stars like we have right here. And Instinct has really taken another step here in the promotion tournament, really doing his job well. He's going to have Yukino on the Vi to give him a little bit of extra space and also potentially target somebody like the Ari who is very very mobile and, and could be somebody that messages could you know try to you know dish and dash around with. yeah uh real choice now for CCG I was gonna say maybe lock in a support uh but they will lock in mid I will say for CCG the best pairings with Jinx especially in the Nautilus for me it's gonna be the Braum then the Rel potentially a Thresh so I guess there are three pinks that uh three picks that Trevor feels like he can play uh, Oriana being taken. That's a lot of zone control for the Kaisa, but it's very clear for Lit that they have a dive comp. It's about Ari, Kaisa finding angles, finding picks, getting Kaisa into the back line, doing work from there. Whereas CCG with Oriana Jinx, a lot of range to try and hold the line. 
And we'll take a look at the second phase of bans already. CCG have a ton of scaling with just those two carries alone. And so, you know, figuring out a way to make sure that they have a bit of a bridge into that late game could be pretty big, specifically for Trevor in that bottom lane. That's where maybe something like the Rel could stick out a little bit more as, as, a, as a, a champion that could roam a little bit more into the mid lane, specifically Crimson's Olaf getting targeted here. He said on record that he's willing to blind this into basically any player. And I think Dragoon, despite his experience, might be no exception. And so Lit going to take that one off the board. Yeah, I... I... Well, it's interesting seeing the Olaf being taken away. I'm almost wondering, something that I actually appreciate from Dragoon, one of the picks that he's kind of willing to blind is actually Mordekaiser. And Mordekaiser yep. against reset comps, it can be really nice taking away a piece from that where uh, you are able to, you know, take some, like, away a part of the front line, makes it easier to attack Jinx and also harder to get the reset. Um, also, I do want to highlight that is a uh, intentional misban from CCG. So... Oh. Uh, that that's not player error. We're not going to go back on the draft. That that is a misban by them. So uh, maybe channeling their inner fly quest not a good not a good sign <laughs> here in the, the the first best of five. Or they're just so confident. I know Argentum like you know he's he's pretty he knows what he's doing with the draft generally. So maybe it's just like yeah you know I don't have anything to ban. We're just going to win anyway. And you know if you're going to do it in any you know, game, game one would be the best one too. Uh, I I like I, I appreciate grapes how you're digging deep here. All right, <laughs> uh, you're giving it. You're trying your. I best gotta step to up for my qualifier credit. guys. Yeah, you're trying your best. You know, give them the benefit of the doubt. That's an oopsie coming out from CCG. <laughs> I said still a lot of support picks available for them. Uh, I, I did kind of call out the Brom being a really good pairing with the Jinx that was banned away by that. I think that's a good call. But Trevor gets his hands on the Thresh, and that Thresh was massive when Trevor got it uh, in the series, I believe, against Ole Miss as Trevor was really good in that. And we talked about how this is a real dive comp against Jinx. Well, now you have a Lantern to try and really protect her. So uh, a little bit more safety for these two immobile carries that CCG are fielding. Response here for Lit. Looks like Xin Zhao could be the answer. This is a pick that Kisno actually was playing even at the start of 2024, which of course wasn't even, um, you know, it wasn't even that big in the meta, but now it's really risen in popularity. And so um, going to be a, a nice pick. Again, it is Fearless. And Yukino is also a very frequent player of this champion. We'll see what the final pick is for Dragoon. He will have to blind pick against Crimson. The Mordekaiser, you said, still available. But it's going to be a Jax potentially getting locked in to round out this game one composition. Uh, I will say that Jax, I, I've really been enjoying Jax coming back into the meadow. I feel like the Counter-Strike, being able to dodge out on auto attacks, and then all the MR you get in your passive is very valuable. This will be the blind for Dragoon. Curious if Crimson wants to pick an Aatrox. Aatrox is good against very dive-heavy comps, but we did see Dragoon play out this matchup into the Aatrox actually win it. Uh, that said, it will be the Gragas, so something to help hold the line against this dive comp. This is a traditional counter to Jax. You just kind of neutralize the lane and go from there. I think that given all the dive that Lit are fielding, I like the Gragas pick a lot this game. It really fits the identity that the CCG is going for. And it's very interesting to me to see Crimson play this Gragas because I was gonna uh, ask he's, you, about you that. know, very, very big on playing the Bruisers, playing the Fighters. I was That's almost I guaranteeing Aatrox. an Aatrox coming in, yeah. a Riven coming in or something like that on R5. But maybe some character growth here, locking in a bit of a tank. You know, you can still build some AP, but do some damage. But um, very much more a facilitating playstyle now. More taking the back seat for Bradley and Instinct on these big carries. And that's... You know, really what CCG needed in this comp, and so mm -hmm. good for Crimson to uh, be able to lock that one in against Dragoon. A couple things we're going to really look out for. First off, uh, Gragas and Orianna, the cast from the Shockwave, a little bit of anti-synergy. So we're going to see if Crimson can wait for that. Also, that Shockwave for Bradley, I think, is a really big spell. Everyone on it wants to dive in, so where and how he uses that to try and help Jinx, for me, is going to be big, whether it's the Engage tool with Vi, or if he's going to wait for that to jump in and use the Shockwave to try and turn the fight from there. I mean, the late game fights, if they're played well by CCG, like there's Wombos on top of Wombos. And again, just one kill is all you need for Instinct to get excited and for things to really get out of hand. Again, it's a best of five as we are looking to promote our first team back into the NACL here in the upper bracket. It's, they're going to be Liddy Sports, who struggled a little bit in the NACL regular season after promoting last summer, or CCG, this quote-unquote super team that was built just for this series. We're on to the rift for game number one.
And, you know, something I found so interesting before we get into this game, just about this tournament crepes, was that the there two favorites for me were Mirage Alliance and CCG. I saw a lot of people thinking that these were the two teams that were going to get out. And when you really think about these two teams, CCG were, were kind of the new guard, right? You can know Brad, the Instinct Trevor. They've all played in Challengers League before, but very recently, whereas Mirage Alliance were the old guard. Uh, yeah. You know, some of those players have uh, played in the traditional, uh, you know, the original NACL where it was promoted to LCS, <laughs> right? And I, yeah. I have a lot of respect still for Alorum and Dardoch, but for me, just how good this team's been and Bradley returning to mid. I remember having to coach against this guy in the North region when I played for Miami. This guy, or coach for Miami, Ohio. This guy was a nightmare to prep for. He is so talented. I know that he is really excited just to be back playing mid, a role that he really feels like he's comfortable in and uh, is having a lot more fun with as Mazel was kind of talking with him behind the scenes. Yeah, I, I know it was kind of a decision of whether he wanted to stay top lane or go back to mid this off season. And I think at the end of the day, it was just, I want to do what's more fun for me. And so that's why we're going to be, he wanted to go back into the mid lane. And, and I think watching this split, it, it doesn't seem like he's missed a beat. He's been super no. dominant. Um, was our back second place MVP candidate for the split as its entirety, despite only playing half of it, which goes to show what kind of impact he really did have. Yeah, I I thought he was he was so good in OQs, and he's been so good in this tournament. And for me, it's so fun for Bradley because you know I, I've been able to talk with him over the years and see him. And I, I will say, you know, going back, it definitely was. I have more fun with this, but that doesn't matter in the long haul. Like the league is a game for me. That's a grind. You're playing ten plus hours a day. You know, folk studying the game doing whatever you can uh, to get better, whether it's solo queue, 1v1s, practice tool, reading up on builds. And if you're not enjoying that, I don't think you're going to be as invested to be good. Uh, and, and so I know it, it kind of sounds silly, but I remember Bradley had such talent mid. And it's really funny because when he originally started getting really hyped up as a mid lane prospect, he actually skipped out on 21 spring to go play just solo queue and get the highest deal he could. Because he's like, you know, I could play comp now, but I wouldn't be on quite as good of a team. And I feel like that would really affect me. He added up on wildcard with Arrow, where they were yeah. the best uh, team that we had in Proving Grounds from tier uh, three at the time. And I believe well, that... they were fifth, sixth finish or seventh, eighth in that Proving Grounds. Yeah, and it's well... funny because it feels like he took the same path back to mid now on CCG, where he's like, I'm going to go boot camp. I'm going to go play solo queue. Get a great team. Come in hot. That's He's trying to promote now as the first team to make it through. Well, if it worked for him last time around, like, why not just do the same thing and happen again? I mean, Wildcard yeah. Red, I remember, was the most dominant team. They also had um, LCS champion Dokla on their roster, at they least did. for that first half of that split before he ended up getting promoted to Team Liquid. So, yeah, um, just just a lot of really fun names as you start to go back into the, his, into the history books. And Bradley finds himself smack in the middle, both in 2021 and here in 2024. That is actually a really fun roster to look back because the second Wildcard team, Manui was on and Toasty as well. Uh, and those guys were each playing. So, uh, you know, sometimes it's fun to dig back into the history. And of course, Bradley for me, that was when he just was mid and roll swap top. I remember Spawn was like, yeah, this guy's a good player. If I can get him to be a top laner at the time, it was great. Bradley was a good top laner, but uh, this is something where I, I, I think it's a lot of fun with Bradley being back mid. I remember, so way back when, I we used to scrim Bethany College because yep. that's the first college he joined. And we scrimmed them before and after Bradley. And the first scrim that Bradley joined, uh, my bad at the time, was a student at Miami, but he had played for Supernova for one tournament. Uh, so like, he was pretty good. He was like mid-GM, and he got out of the scrim. He's like, dude, that guy is so good. This team's better than us now. <laughs> <laughs> like, it, like, it was just like that, you know? Uh, so shout out Shang Yun uh, and Troy up there. He's he's great. But that, it, yeah, I, he was so good. He made the craziest Silas play in like, the first game we played against him. We're like, all right, this guy's really good, right? He's like probably the best player we scrimmed against. And you know what's interesting is, at least the last time I talked to him, which was at the start of qualifier number two, he was actually back at Bethany after returning from Korea because yeah. he said that that was actually a good place for him to just grind, really focus on on playing solo queue. And even though he's not enrolling in the university again for this semester, he just mm -hmm. thought, you know, being a part of this big community of, of players is going to be most conducive for his success. And so far, we've seen a lot of success. You know, that's funny because it's almost taking a page at APA and Spyrax's book. Because when in a way, yeah. that, that same year, APA was at Maryville in 22, and Spyrax was, that was his first put on FlyQuest Challengers, and he would go back to Maryville in the offseason boot camp and like 1v1, and APA has done the same thing as he 
became a pro and both those guys go back there they get really good ping and they're able to be around you know 10 plus players that are very talented to the game they can all kind of push each other to be better it's uh really cool I, of course apa he made it to the nacl finals and was given uh spyrax and the rest of maryville a back rope up on stage he got to go back like help him out behind the scenes uh the day wasn't the best for maryville but it was cool seeing apa the day after he hoisted the lcs trophy being there to support his team that, that, yeah. there's a lot about apa and what the culture that maryville has really been able to, to navigate but uh i don't know how long his pause is going to be so we're kind of going down a rabbit hole graves <laughs> it, it's a fun one but we can return to the game yeah. whatever you want we're, we're talking about all this history because there really is so much between all the players that are on ccg specifically like you know, Bradley being a part of that, Trevor also being a part of this ecosystem for so long, yep. um, having a ton of, of really um, you know, decorated teammates, and, and you know he's trying to get his way back into Tier 2 as well, so that's always super exciting to take a look at with this whole roster of players. Um, before we you know dive any further into this, I just want to update the viewers a little bit before we get um, any other updates. One of the players on Lit had a mouse issue, they had to reset their PC. We are going to get into game shortly, so... Just bear with us a little bit longer. We, we'll, yeah, I, I we'll get know, out I don't of your hair shortly. Was. Just like a random update. That that's the worst. You know, we we, we had our broadcast. Uh, a random internet update happened, and that that knocked out some service. Yeah. And now we get a the mouse update. I guess everyone just decided, <laughs> hey, it's 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 a late afternoon on a Friday. Let's just update everything and screw your weekend plans. You know, right? Yeah. No, nobody would ever be doing anything for fun no. like on on the weekend on Friday just night scanning. on your computer. Yeah. yeah no. Perfect time to update. <laughs> Everyone should um, be out, right? Everyone should be out socializing, and here we are. Yeah, yeah, here we are. Well, thank you for all of you camera. for for staying tuned for us, <laughs> tuning into League of Legends stream on your Friday night. Hope you are enjoying. Um, yeah. Let's get back into this game a little bit though, because we are about ready to hop Hopefully, back in yeah. for game number one. Um, Lady Sports composition, you know, has a lot of moving pieces overall, but you know, I, I look at Dragoon on the Jacks, on you know, somebody who could be split pushing a little bit. That's Another player that I'm really interested to see against Crimson, who is kind of this new guard after Dragoon finally gotten his opportunity in Tier 2. It's funny because I remember interviewing Viper and Sniper at times, and they would always talk about, you know, their, their other brother. He's like, hey, you know, he's a really good Yasuo Yone player. He's like in GM or he just hit Challenger. And now Crimson has just hit the top of Challenger and now the top of Tier 3 trying to promote, make his own path in the Tier 2. And I, I know that you know, everyone talks about how, oh, there's got to be something they're eating good over there in that house. You know, this is kind of genetics. But to follow up two brothers in your footstep, try and take the same path, it does take a lot of guts. And knowing that you are a little bit behind, even if he is twins with Sniper, uh, trying to make your own path is something that I, I have a lot of respect for Crimson for. And I think that he's done a great job of figuring out how to play his game throughout all this, uh, Graves. And that's something that's really served him well. Yeah, and I know... Um... Something that, we, you know, sometimes these players with family hierarchy and things like that don't like to, to mention it as much. But talking to Crimson specifically, like, he, oh, he's very much, like, in, endowed with his family. He says, like, the biggest oh. goal that he has is to play in LCS so he can play against his brother in a match and have his family have to choose which side he wants to root for. <laughs> so that, that is a very indicative goal that he, very clear goal that he has on his mind. He, he actually even set a date, 2025, he wants to be starting in the LCS and off to a very good start right now. I mean, they could have mom and dad in the audience with split jerseys. You know, they could be like the Kelsey's of League of Legends here. Yeah, true. Yeah. Uh, that said, we do have each jungler working their way towards the bot side. Instinct going to take that three-wave base to try and sneak in what I assume is going to be a Cole. As Kizno is going to make his way towards the AoE camp. Seeing a lot more junglers try and delay their buff takes so they can be strong for Gromp. So Kizno taking that red buff last might still have it up. Or, or I said Gromp. I meant Grubs. Uh, grapes. <laughs> Take a red buff blast. You might have it up for the Grubs take. So I think Kizno's setting up for that early on. Jax with Grasp can get some priority against the Gragas, but it does get tricky with levels as Gragas with levels just ends up getting so, so strong uh, with just his kit. Every point you put into his kit feels fantastic, no matter where it is. Yeah. And down to the bottom lane, we see Instinct going for an early reset, picking up a call. That's going to help him scale better into the late yep. game as we continue to go on. Um, ahead in CS a little bit against Rock, Boom, and Flux right now in this Kaiser Nautilus lane. We're not expecting too much from this uh, 2v2 until both of those champions hit level 6. Then the all-in can really start to happen, combined with Kizno potentially on a dive. Everything being quiet though. Okay. As Kizno does decide to hit Blast Plant, that will help his bot lane clear out a ward, but expect each of these junglers to head towards the Grubs. Again, I, I think top lane priority. We'll see. Jack's got the first three waves in, which is typical, but Dragoon stuck around. 
didn't take a base. Sometimes when you do take that early base, like instinct to this point, if Lit were trying to fight to get this wave in, there's an item advantage for the Jinx, so that is one strategy that a lot of teams use to try and get some form of advantage, like another perk of the three wave base. Dragoon didn't take that though, so he's now being shoved in. And it might be an angle here where if Crimson gets this in and TP's back, you will have advantage for the Grubs. Especially if Bradley is able to nap that early six. I know Ari can be slippery, but it uh, could be big. This is important to note though, Messages actually did take an early TP. And Kizno, of course, still has that red buff up, so both teams really posturing for this topside objective. Yeah, with Message just having to push right now, Kizno was able to get to that top scuttle first, and now the Zinzao is actually going for a little bit of an invade on the second respawn of Raptors. Gonna dash in onto Yukino, land that three talent strike, the wind becomes lightning, doing a lot of damage. Both junglers have their conquerors proc in 1v1. Message is gonna be able to reach there first and push Yukino away for now. Bradley going back to base. Kizno will be able to secure that Raptors, but now it's pretty low on that first timer for the grub spawning. Big thing there is that Bradley hadn't TP'd back yet, so Messages was able to join. And also on the top side, we did see Crimson. I talked about how Jax didn't take that three-wave base. He ends up getting pushed back into his turret, almost goes down. Dragoon just going to try and get as much experience as he can under the turret. Dragoon will have to TP back, and fortunately, or that given Messages TP'd first and Kizno forced Yukino out off, it will be the three grubs going over to Lit. But Yukino being forced out of that side of the jungle, they managed to get the camps, and we'll go straight to the Dragon where that will be an advantage for CCG. Yeah, great initiative by Messages on this Ari. This is a pick that he really looked good on the last, the first series yeah. that they played against Winthrop in that decisive game number three. And somebody who is going up against Bradley, who we've been talking a lot about, but Messages also somebody who's very, very good. Point enough, both from the Columnar Tree as well, uh, with Bethany and Native, yeah. as Messages was on that uh, team, of course. Uh, CCG and Bradley did knock Ole Miss down to the lower bracket, but uh, it, it has been really nice seeing Messages level up because, for me, uh, Messages was someone that, you know, talking with some folks around Tier 3, they expected him to get promoted with Native. I know Fnatic, uh, someone that I've always talked to a lot behind the scenes, spoke pretty highly of Messages at the time, and uh, he really stepped in that CLG Faith team just trying to save face and save that team. Obviously, that didn't work out in his favor, but uh, Messages is always someone that uh, I thought was kind of hyped up and didn't live up to it for me in Challengers League. So seeing him really show up in that promotion tournament was great. To see someone, for me, he needed to step up. And again, I, I think that he really did, and is a big part of the reason that lives here. Yeah, he took a, a kind of meteoric rise in 2023 from what we saw the year before over on a team called Third Party back in the day. And I thought that that trajectory could have continued here in his first split in Tier 2. I know that was the goal of his going into last year. He was able to do it with Lit the last you know opportunity he had in the summer season. But... Haven't seen, didn't see enough of it in that regular season. And this is, again, an, another chance to prove himself against one of the best mid laners that we think yeah. are, is in this tournament in, in, in its entirety. I mean, straight off, I think Bradley and Instinct have been the two best players in this tournament so far. And I, I really want to see if they can continue to live up to it. Just watching them play has been fantastic. Um, at the moment, though, he's still sneaking in to take away the red buff. That's nice. Bradley will spot it, but he might get pinched. That's going to be a flash. Yeah, has to flash away. Flux actually going to follow the flash of his own. Bradley very smartly sitting in the wave to make sure Messages could not land a charm and the Orianna out safe. Maybe he actually ults this. They're trying to deny the Raptors. He's kind of under siege. Kizno, or Yukino, did just hit six, but Kizno hit it off the Raptors. And so Kizno getting some really nice counter jungling in. I, yeah. I like how him and Messages are playing off one another. I uh, talked about how each of these junglers, you know, they like to be aggressive. And for me, Kizno at times would be too aggressive and kind of throw his leads or not respect his camps. I really like, though, how he's playing off of his laners. It feels like these two very synced up with this early game. And Kizno's been getting some decent denies in against Yukino early. Right. Level 4 still on Plux. He's going to get hooked up by a death sentence of Trevor. Rock Room having his ultimate, nice. but so does Instinct. The Super Mega Death Rocket comes out, and that is an easy 2v2 first blood for the CCG bottom lane. Want to give credit to both Instinct and Trevor. The Chompers didn't hit off the death sentence, but Trevor was able to push Plux into the Chompers. Waited for the Aftershock. Instinct was able to get that alt off, get the Execute. Easy bot kill for CCG as Trevor gets Instinct off the races. Take a little look at this. Flux kind of just had no idea Trevor was in that bush, and it was beautifully comboed by Instinct, with Instinct. Yeah. I, I really like, again, Trevor waited for that Aftershock to expire, then threw out the play right after into the Chompers. No counterplay for Flux, who did burn his flash trying to attack mid. Uh, so very well managed. And Instinct gets a kill. And this Jinx Kaisa matchup, it is one where Kaisa can always get to the backline and try and execute Jinx. But if Jinx gets an item advantage or ability to really push the Kaisa out of lane, it can become significant and something I'm going to look out for for the second dragon at CCG. 
does have a path to victory stacking up these dragons given the item advantage bot for instinct already. Also the lethal tempo build for Rock Boom as well, so we're not going to see that poke AP oriented style. It will be uh, kind of more focused on that dive, which can be paired nicely alongside the Nautilus. And Plux has to be careful again. It's another death sentence hit from Trevor, and Plux is stuck in a 3v1. Kid's not going to dash in to try to save his support, but death sentence oh. does land. But Instinct picks up his second kill with the Super Mega Death Rocket. Messages will get one back as Bradley falls, but another one going over to CCG. It's now 3 to 1, and all three kills in the hands of Instinct. And Messages is running for the hills. He's going to maybe try and sneak in and execute. I think he can do so successfully. Yukino doesn't have a smite, does have flash, but I don't think he's going to get in range. Let's see if it even counts as an execute. He might still get free kill credit over. No, just going to be that execute. So a little bit of experience given over to Yukino, but no gold, which is a good thing. But two more kills go over to Instinct. As, again, it's the level 5 Nautilus Bucks. Procs the aftershot a little bit late. There's not a lot of damage that comes in. Instinct from downtown hits the Super Mega Death Rocket. Bradley is the focus, but he does sneak in ult off. Kisno has no chance. Numbers advantage for CCG. Trevor was first on the play. Again, Grapes. And feeding those kills over to the right player. Also, shout out to Instinct. Off that mid-roam from Plux, he did pick up two plates in the bot side on top of the three kills that he now has. So Instinct has a huge item advantage once he's able to get back to base to use it. Yeah, already up that crit cloak, and I don't think he has actually reset since that last play. So going to be very, very far ahead. You see right now the gold. Wow. One and a half thousand gold separates him and Rock Boom. Really well done here by CCG. I, I just... It's a Jinx comp, right? Just play for your Jinx, get resets, make sure the Jinx gets fed. And we saw Instinct already cash this big end in the tournament. To no surprise, I, mean, I think it's something that fits his style. Instinct for me. Again, someone that has always team fought really, really well Grapes. Just has good instinct for... How to move about fights. I, I remember his there. LCS debut. He got a Pena on Zeri in like the very first game. Uh, we ended up seeing you know, some of his laning. Uh, kind of, I don't want to say get exposed. He was so young and for me promoted really early into the LCS. But because, you know, he was this great team fighter, Someone that I was always excited to see develop. I don't think TSM gave him the time he needed to develop. So I'm excited to see him hopefully get back in Challenges League with his team. Because he's someone for me that always had promise. And when I think of some of the good marksmen that we've had step up. Masu is always a great team fighter. Meech was always a good team fighter. So Jed, great team fighter right now. I thought Instinct could have really followed that path. And so getting him back in this lead would, would be great. Yeah, Instinct had you know not the greatest split in 2023 spring on FlyFam. That roster had a lot of problems that they were dealing with throughout yeah. and ended up getting demoted their first split. But this is somebody who was part of that you know, 100 Thieves organization back with other players like Busio and Young, all players who now are having some some pretty good success either in Tier 2 or Tier 1. A shout out to Busio over there on FlyQuest. And Instinct's another one of those players who had that same level of potential that 100 Thieves saw. And right now, we're seeing him start to come back and, and make another attempt at Tier 2. I appreciate it. I know uh, Bradley said just playing with his team 2 was so fun. As, you know, Yukino, he didn't know him as well, but Yukino's... Uh, he's definitely a, a lively personality. Uh, yep. Likes to make everyone else laugh and... Uh, Instinct and Bradley go back a little bit, so uh, I, I think getting Instinct in a comfortable zone again always been a talented player. It's Trevor. Oh, good catch here. Cancel that hook there by Plux. He throws at the depth charge. Here comes Rockman as well, but Plux might be dead before That's the fight even that. begins. That's Brad another kill on the Instinct, and Kizno now stuck in a very, very bad spot. The Crescent Guard comes out, but as soon as it times out, makes it two more kills for our qualifier champions. Uh, Yukino taking that kill. I don't know if that was necessary or not. Could have gotten yet another one over to Instinct, but he might still be hunting. He does have that cease and assist available as Nautilus trying to sprint back to base. And that play, Messages was in base with no TP. Bradley was able to walk bot. I don't think that play was available to them, and now it's going to be even worse. Yep, Shockwave on top of the cease and assist. That is beautifully executed by the mid-jungle of CCG. It is now 6-1. to one. So That Shockwave comes out earlier, too. Instinct picks that up with a super mega death rocket. He was trying to line it off, but Bradley delayed it. Kill doesn't go over to Instinct, but it does go over to Bradley. Instinct might have enough gold in his pockets too, because this looks like it's going to be first brick going over to the Jinx. And this game is going to be really tough for Lit to come back. Their front line kind of relies on this Jax and Zin Zhao alt. CCG have some ways to close the gap. And this Jinx is so far out of the curve right now, Graves. Yeah, CCG really playing around their bottom lane. Again, as we said at the top of the show, not something that we saw them do a ton. But now, with Instinct having all these resources, this is where he strives... This is where he does the best, right? In the late game, getting a, mm -hmm. getting the opportunity to team fight well. He has a full Kraken Slayer. Going to be at that IE in less before 20 minutes. That is going to be such a big spike for him. And 
DCG, I think, just we're going to control the 5v5 from this point moving forward. And Trevor spotted Pux every step of the way. He was clearing out wards, and now just hook for hook. Gets him to eat a tower shot, even. Aftershock expires. Instinct it gives a respect. Flash burns both sums, but I mean, this was really never in doubt for CCG as his play from lit. Again, Messages was in base. Bradley wasn't. Uh, he walked down, followed, so... I don't exactly know what happened. I don't know if Bradley got a health bar advantage mid, but looks like the fighting continues. Yep, give me six scrubs and the Rift Herald over to Kizno. So the top side of the map is where we've seen things work for Lit. We will see, though, where those resources are allocated, where Shelly decides to drop. Right now, Crimson pushing on the bottom side. The tower was already taken down, so they're not losing too much off of this play. I do love what Yukino is doing, Hovering Instinct, as they try and hit this turret, and let's trying to make a play. Ari's over the wall. Dragoon, he's gonna jump in, double stun onto the bot lane. Nice hook coming out from Plux as he gets the redemption. That's a shutdown. Going over to Kizno, and Lit are now finally back onto the board. Will be another one as Yukino falls. Another nice charm for messages. They'll make it three to nothing, Lit. That's a great call from the, on a big overextension from CCG. They just used all their tools in the bot lane to try and make things happen. And then on the flip side of the map, we have lit. They see a no flash, no ghost jinx. They just picked up the Rift Herald. They see the jinx pushing off the lane swap. They don't have Rock Boom there to answer, but the rest of the team was there to make a play. As lit finds a, a bounce back, much needed gold in their pockets. Again, still think this game is going to be really hard for them to play out, but that was something that lit really needed to get back in this one. Oh, that's just. What, what are we doing here? He's, he's dipping. He's got no wall. All right. That's a, it's a out. quicker reset, I guess. You get to yeah. be a little bit safer. Um. <laughs> There was a, we did a skit on tier 3 tonight called Rift Carol Driving School. Messages did not pass. Uh, we're going to look at the replay. Oh, Rocket ends up getting, uh, the base ends up getting off. It was, it was a good try. If that actually hits, then it was a flash. Probably needed to come out of Messages, but not the case. The Messages, he's the one that has some gold in his box. It's now on this Ari. So you can make things happen. Is Crimson maybe getting ganked? Blocks. 1v2, Dragoon suddenly doing a lot of damage after winning that last fight. Flashes in, forces the summoner out of the Crimson as well. Kizno will dash in and make sure that things are finished off. Litter back into this game. Cubby, the gold lead back down to about 1,000. It will be traded back with the turret top. Crimson's weak-sided. Tried to go for a bit of a skirmish. Dragoon gets the best of him with the help of his friends. Meanwhile, Instinct still getting more gold in the top side. So it looks like this dragon will be sacked over to CCG. But the, the trade, it honestly, gold wise is in favor of CCG. Bradley gets mid outer to half. Instinct got a couple autos in on the top inner. to get that wave all the way in and still being hovered by Trevor, who's actually Instinct might need help here. As Ari did show up, and that's a tough scenario for Kings to be in. I'd love to see messages get really aggressive on Instinct, but they don't have vision on that side of the jungle, so the lack of control top side means that uh, there, there's really no play. Jinx can scurry on out. And at least the, they do pick up the dragon, but. The gold is still going out of the Jinx. That's really the big concern of this game. And now, Gizno. Yeah, might have taken a little bit too long to take that dragon. If another player helped him out, he would have maybe been out earlier. Instead, it will be Kizno trading his life. At least I think so. Oh, yeah, Trevor, Trevor going to finish it off with the death sentence. Um, he, was, he was trying to fight. You know, in response to... kind of dead there, yeah. but... Oh, well. Ops the soul. That's, that's a good thing. And now, you Yukino, know, looking towards Rock Boom as well. Doesn't have the ultimate. Misses the Flash Vault Breaker. And the death sentence from Trevor goes just a little bit wide. So Lit getting out there carries out by just the slimmest of margins, but this mid-tier one still under threat. Well, uh, death sentence lands and just get messages. Oh, oh, hold on. Got Flux on the backside, landed the death charge, catching Yukino out after he tried to go for a flank. Nice dark passage to try to save him, but Rock Boom dashes in with a killer instinct and makes it another one for nothing trade. You think Bradley and Trevor, they get that first tower, but they lose their jungler for it. Game's really starting to speed up. I, I think that this play still really favors CCG though, given that Crimson nearly took down that inner turret. They did get the outer. It was a one for one trade. Rockloom got some gold, but the objective still keep on getting funneled into CCG. Their gold's in the right place. And I, I think that Wits comp as this goes on, it's gonna be really tough to deal with the Ori Jinx. As you can see, Messages tries to find the Charm Flash, oh. but that splits the uprights. Yukino gets really low on this side. Rockboom is able to find the execute, but Rockboom loses Flash, and that means that the next via Oriana combo probably headed straight for that Kaisa. I, I, I will say, what a Yiko Chad move there by Rockboom. Yeah, yeah, ulting into four yeah. people and just being able to escape without that kill going down. I mean, it takes some kahunas to, to go to go, kahunas, I think, to, get, yeah. to go in there. I mean, Rockboom's always had those back since Rock Bottom, you know. I, True. Yeah, we've never doubted Rockboom's ability to, to go in and try and go for things. This guy's never been scared of a single point in his life, and we do appreciate that from Rockboom. But 
I'm hoping the CCG is able to punish that, because that is a big flash being down. Him and messages both burn flashes in that fight. Uh, Isa, of course, does have some mobility, but you got a cease and assist heading straight for your face with the Oriana ball to follow. That's going to be really tough for Rock Boom to navigate. We'll see if Lid are able to pull the trigger first, because I think that is the best way that you can survive that initial engage if they are caught off guard a little bit. Maybe an engage from Plux followed by Rock Dive in the back line, and then with the composition fight a little bit separated, things can get a little bit dicey. Kizno looking for a tr trade onto Bradley as Yukino will follow on to messages himself. Teleport comes in from both top laners as looks like things are gonna get a little messy once again, less than 20 minutes into this game. Dragoon comes in with a beautiful counter strike, buys enough space for Kizno to pick up the kill onto Yukino. Shockwave has to be used defensively as Dragoon still on the chase. Ooh. A nice flash in to prevent the cast from sending them away, but now CCG have brought the reinforcements Instinct. as their bot lane has arrived. Instinct now excited. Hook lands on to Crimson and he will follow as well, but now the Jinx getting targeted. There's the killer instinct forward. There's no Oriana combo, and that means Rock Boom can get himself a double kill. Trevor has to flash away, and Lit somehow win another fight. Instinct flashed in to try and get a reset off messages, but he got an ult charge back. He was able to get out of the fight. Instinct was stuck. The Lancer was already used, and that turned things around. They're onto the Baron. Just 20 minutes into this wave. game. Bradley and Trevor here to oh, defend. Enough. That's a very scary Oriana Cubby, and so Lit are going to back off. It was no shockwave, but that's enough. Lit's health bars were low. They had to respect that. Pretty wild fight here, though, as we go back throughout the replay. I like the idea of the turn from Yukino on the messages. I think stalling the Ari is the right move. But Bradley does have to burn that flash rather early. And Messages is able to get a kill and get out. Yukino went too deep. Now Dragoon's in a 2v3 where this Jax is able to just continuously push forward. Sunder Sky doing some work here too. The Flash comes in, pushes into the Bradley. Keep your eyes on Instinct though, because he gets the first kill. He's going to go for Messages, but because Bradley, uh, or I should say Gragas falls, Messages gets another ult charge, able to sneak on out. Instinct can't finish it off. Lantern was used early to kind of get him into the fight, which is kind of a little sussy from uh, Trevor. Didn't have it later on to actually sneak him out of there. Jinx, movement spells were down, Instinct gets targeted, and uh, that's a big win for Lit, as the gold lead continues to be about 1.5-2k gold for CCG, but Lit getting a lot more gold on their carries in this game. Uh, Kai'Sa can kind of play this one out. Uh, I think that's really important for uh, Lit moving forward, because Kai'Sa does get out range, but she's able to go in, and Rock Boom has angles where he can win. Oh, this is impressive. Dragoon's no well, TP. Now, oh. CC is going to fight where they can, you know, pull yeah, the no trigger idea. themselves. Oh, no. They're going to start the Baron up right now. Going to get spotted up by the Blue Ward. Bradley playing position very nicely and lands a nice dissonance onto Kizno to spot the jungler for Lit out. Baron already at half HP. In comes the engage from Yukino. Already Kizno is down. But look at Dragoon on the backside. Finding the kill on to the Jinx and Instinct is down for the count. It will be two for one for now. Dragoon still very, very strong. Rock Jumping boom. in onto Crimson. Looking for that one engage onto Bradley. Rock Rockmoon going to jump over. Try to take down the Orion. Seraph Steel going to keep him alive for now. There's Yukino over the wall. Rock Boom is down. It's a shutdown for the buy. But it's now a 2v2 as three kills go each way. Dragoon trying to find some more. He jumps forward. Looking for another bit of crowd control. Does not have the flash, but he's able to use the leap strike on to Trevor and take him out of the fight. And Bradley's running around with just those little... Uh, infernal flakes, I guess, to chase, get him enough move speed to escape. The Cinders helped get him out. Rock Boom played that fight awesome in, in this one. His ult repositioned him to the other side of the fight. I know he went down, but he got so much DPS off. It actually got lit the fight despite a really good start for CCG. As Bradley's not on the Baron, he's trying to zone. They end up pulling the trigger onto Kizno. So full execute onto the smite. But keep your eyes on Rock Boom throughout this. First off, Instinct's no flash. So Rock Boom plays off the depth charge and gets him because Instinct ended up being on the wrong side of the fight. And then Rock Boom repositions to DPS Bradley later on. Really good as he's so safe autoing, he's able to dodge out on Crimson's EQ. And yes, he goes down to Yukino, but the DPS was so significant that it allowed for Messages and Dragoon to actually get through the rest of this one. And that fight, again, started by Dragoon on the Jax. We haven't talked about him a lot so far, especially because of his, you know, Pretty boring laning phase that was set up for himself, but in these last two fights specifically, has found countless angles with the counter strike, yeah. using the leap strike to get in onto instinct specifically, and the six and zero jinx now six and three. And CCG has to be a little bit more careful with how they set up with this jinx. Yes, there are ways to attack. Look at him as we see Dragoon. He's so safe. I mean, that was, that was pretty aggressive coming in, but he is level fourteen and feels safe enough with the counter strike. I think Oriana is gonna need some pen it looks like bradley's going for potential death cap coming in but Jax is gonna be really strong here 
uh, until Ori, I think, is going to get 10 on her build. Dragoon with the Counter Strikes can really deal with quite a bit. And Gragas is likely going pen next item, but we'll see. As Gragas does have options like uh, can go Zanyas. Uh, not bad for Dragas this game. I'm getting too into the weeds with items. I usually hate talking about <laughs> We're, items, we're looking around. Yeah. I, 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 I do right think now. it's significant for Jax. Looking strong. Has that Thunder Sky as well. We saw the base. Now with Lit. Going back to the Baron after Yukino, Yukino base. base. A Such a smart move from them. Why? You're based on a war. They don't know. They have no blue trick. It's the check. Wit pull off the heist. What a game this is coming. This is game just oh. number game number one of what could be a best of five. It was six to one in favor of CCG. They're up 3,000 gold at around 10, 15 minutes. But Lit have clawed all the way back and they have themselves a rally no. cry Baron buff. Yesterday I said that I miss games like this with you, Graves, but I don't miss moments like that. that that's just <laughs> sad. We, we just... We base without Burning Sweeper. It's based on a ward. And lit, they pulled the trigger. They had all the info. Now, Yukino, he's going to try to make a fast play on the other side. Dragoon shouldn't be walking oh. in here. They should play out the lanes, not walk in jungle. Off 3v1, Counter-Strike now used. Oh, as lit, they want to collapse on this. They want all oh. the smoke. Forcing a flash out of Plux, and now... Like Lit are gonna long chase this one out. Kizno gonna dash forward with the audacious charge. Watch Bradley on the flank. Rockman gonna get singled out instead. Gonna go for the mid laner himself. Death charge finds so many on the other side, and already Yukino's down. There comes Rockboom. There's the three man stun, and Lit take over. It's four for nothing. Where was Bradley in that fight? He was walking the join, then he got forced out completely. Went to the wave. When he doesn't join, everything is doomed for the Jinx and. The angles that Lit can create when the game gets bloody like this and summoner spells are down, Jinx fights, it's hard to execute cleanly. Lit have continued to fight, continued to bounce back in this one, and they're going to sneak game one off CCG. He brought, I, Bradley was trying to join. I don't know what happened with Bradley. Man, if that hook didn't connect, it could have looked a little bit different. Watch Rock Boom specifically. He zones Bradley out so yeah. much. Just the threat of the Kaisa diving onto him. And then as soon as Bradley's out of the fight, Rockboom's able to dash in. Oh man, Rockboom's been so big this game. He flashes onto Bradley just to zone him off. That is so Chad coming out from Rockboom. Then he gets in the back half after the depth charge. Yeah. Rockboom's having himself a game. I was hyping up Instinct coming into this. He got the big lead in the early game, but Rockboom's team fights on Kai'Sa have been built just a bit different here, Grapes. He's been making a big difference how he's able to play around with all the CC in this comp. Dipping, ducking, and diving into the right sides of fights to make things happen for Lit. I know that it doesn't show in his scoreline, but I feel like he's had such a massive impact with the DPS in this game. Oh, absolutely. I mean, Rockboom, just always somebody, he kind of came out of nowhere last year and, and had a lot of big moments, even on a struggling Lit Esports roster. Um, you know, I, I remember that, that game that he had where he like ended up 1v4ing on Aphelios and then like backdooring to end the game earlier on this season. Um, another highlight moment, definitely here in game number one, and I know that he's somebody specifically that wants to have a lot more highlight moments, whether it's here in Tier 2 or even LCS. I know that's a big dream of his, and keeps playing like this. He's on a good trajectory. Oh, look at the mid lane. They find a flash on the charm oh. on the Bradley messages, picking up that kill. CCG are kind of caught out right now. They took the Tier 2 top lane, and now Lit are going to have their chance at Inhibitor Turret. I love the confidence we are seeing out of Lit. They know they are the underdogs, but they are playing like there is nothing that can stop them. Messages burning that flash proactively to take Bradley. They see three people bot. They say, I can make this play. They do it. They take down the mid laner. They take down the inhibitor. And Lit, man, they're playing like a team that really does believe in themselves. And for me, this was kind of missing in Challengers League during the split. So many games are just getting crushed in lane. In this game, Lit were behind heavily early, but their ability to team fight their way back. We saw moments of this from Lit in the regular season of Challengers League, but when it matters most, trying to earn their spot back, Lit doing more than what I expected from them in this one and proving that CCG aren't just the monumental favorites coming in. You got to put some respect on Lit's name in this tournament, and Lit are earning that with their play. A team that is always disrespected, whether it was last oh, oh. summer in the promotion tournament or now. Oh, Looks like there's going to be a bit of a re-engage coming out from CCG. Nice find by Yukino, but he will go down by the hands of that tier 2 turret just Went with a dying breath. That's kind of nice. The depth charge didn't hit. It actually goes over to Rockboom. I think he's okay with that one for one as they had to remove the Kaiser from the map, but at least Rockboom got some gold in the back half. Their dragon too to lit I, the infernal. Everyone on this team does damage, so triple infernal gonna help them out quite a bit. As it's all about the execute out of the jinx. So far, it's been damn clean grapes. 
And we're just gonna have to wait for this next Baron is that they need to get Rock Boom back on the map, but with a mid inhibitor down, Dragoon can't split push. They have him in the top side right now. I kind of want to see them position him bot. Try and stretch the map before this Baron comes out. And, and Lit Grapes. I mean, I'm so surprised at this. Look, I thought game one was just going over to CCG. It was yeah. going to be really calm and cool. But Lit, man, they're, they're showing some true grit in this one. It, it definitely really looked like that see. in the early game. And, and yeah. I think the only thing now is if Lit do not find that quote-unquote perfect fight that we've seen with Rock Boom diving to the back line, it's still an Ori Jinx comp and... Both Ori and Jinx have three completed items. You actually see Instinct now with a Seekers to just get himself a little bit of extra safety in the event that Dragoon is able to jump onto him and, and maybe buy some space for the rest of his team. And so, in a full front to back, I still like CCG's chances, despite them being down about 3,000 gold. This next Baron in about a minute is really going to decide this game, though. I do think that's a smart buy from Instinct. Just uh, The depth charge has been so big this game. It's really being the trigger pull for Rock Boom to just jump in the back line for free. Both teams kind of posturing here. CCG, though, they have to keep on picking up these mid waves. Oriana has a ton of wave clear, but uh, that is the power of the inhibitor being down. Giving lit priority, at least setting up into the top side jungle of CCG. As both teams posturing, and there's Dragoon transitioning into the bot side. Nice charm. A little bit of poke for now, but now lit. Have to be a little bit more careful. Okay, Vault Breaker Dragoon's green TPing. channel. Watch the TP, though. Dragoon wants to go in, and the rest of lit following his footsteps. Death Charge already landing onto Instinct. Yukino trying to dive the back line, but he has no follow-up. That's already the first kill. There comes Dragoon as well. It's two for nothing. It's a double kill coming in from Rock Boom. He uses the Killer Instinct forward. Another one as Crimson falls. Bradley uses the Shockwave all too late after the fight's already over. Wow. Messages with the charm. We'll give a quadra kill over to Rock Boom. And Lit Esports, the representatives from the NACL, will take game one of this best of five. The front line wasn't there for Jinx. The Jacks and Zin Zhao couldn't be autoed by Jinx thanks to the Crescent guard and counter strike instinct got nothing done in that fight rock boom ran the rest of it and what a bounce back victory from lit as that early game was not looking good for them they were down 3k gold down two dragons and the point of the game that really turned was the top side it lost that fight bot instinct had all the gold took first brick it rotated him up top with no summoner spells they overextended with no vision to try and hit that turret that got three kills over to lit really got them back into this game as rock boom picked up solo farm and from there, their ability to punish Jinx being down summoner spells and continuously fight to make sure that Jinx didn't have summoner spells available to her was the big difference in that game. I mean, with the composition that is a little bit harder to execute, especially if you're far behind, Lit really finding such great angles. And that just goes to show that these guys have been playing together for a while. And they, they definitely know what the other wants to do in, in terms of finding these fights. Dragoon specifically on the Jax diving in. Rock Boom with such tremendous follow-up, getting himself a quadra kill to end the game. And Lit, take game one. It is a best of five, though, and CCG uh, have not played a game, a series that has gone more than three games. So if they want to make it into the NACL, they're going to have to do that for the first time. And hey, maybe their, champ their champ will get uh, you know, targeted a little bit with Fearless. Second loss with Bradley, and uh, there's no Oriana Jinx as a comp that... I don't think it's up Lit's alley exactly, but they can run. We've seen Rock Boom be good on the hyper carries. Man, Rock Boom was hell impressed with that game. So I'm, I'm excited to see if Rock Boom can continue to bring it throughout this series. Well, we'll see if CCG can even the series up or if Lit is going to take us to match point after game number two of this series. We're going to take a short break. We'll be right back with that game two draft. Don't go anywhere. They said it couldn't be done. They said the world would never accept a cookie this long or a churro and probably not a pretzel either they also said under no circumstances should those really long and delicious treats be wildly affordable to which we said but we already made them and they are introducing the incredible new footlong sidekicks get one at subway today